looking at the Briggs Field Rugby area here at the uh, campus of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where today we come your way with yet another edition of Stateside Footy. While in the background, the Bruins take their victory lap through the city of Boston and uh, airplanes and helicopters circle around in the sky. The Demons are having a big event today here at uh, the MIT facility as we get set for more footy. Right now what we have is a mixed game between the Boston Demons and the uh, Black and Gold All-Stars. Basically, they're going to be mixed squads. Mixed squads being uh, both the uh, men's and the uh, women's uh, Demons players battling each other. And once again, have another great game here. Coming up today, of course, it's a huge day. They've got uh, Brett Kirk coming from the AFL as part of his uh, worldwide tour to promote footy around the world as, uh, in advance of the International Cup in August, which will be in Melbourne. And we'll be back with the action next. You're watching Stateside Footy. Stay tuned for Metro Footy Action. It's coming to you from Cambridge, Massachusetts. All right, guys, we got to be smarter about what we bite on, okay? I want everyone to go outside. We're going to run Red Rover on three. What about you, Tony? I'm going to run around in circles, flap my arms, and make engine noises like this. When it comes to playing, we kids are the pros. We're eating right, too. We fuel up. To play 60! Your school doesn't have a program? Be a leader. Start one. Click today and join, join the movement. movement.
brings it to ball it up at center. I believe that's uh, Burbank, one of the teams there. Don't have a roster, so half of this stuff I'll be guessing, but uh, just have to go by uh, the players as I recognize them. It's Burbank in the ruck. It's hit to uh, toss it up here. Once again, uh, some of the uh, Lady Demons making an appearance. Uh, we've seen them so far in a couple of areas. We saw one of the, uh, some of them play in that first footy match in Yonkers, New York, and then the Demons took on the New York Magpies and came off with an impressive 34-2 win. And uh, let's see, the All-Stars have it now. With it, that's uh, Christina Calvillo. Tries to get it up to Burbank. Back to uh, Calvillo now. She's still got it. It's being tackled, though. And with it now, here comes Burbank again. This is going to be a game that consists of two 20-minute halves. And uh, once again, the Demons have it. Kick ahead. And it looks like Devine's got it. He's going to try a kick for goal. It's going to bounce. And it's going to be taken there. I believe that uh, looks like Joe Connor. As the uh, kick went out on the full. Actually, it didn't go out on the full. It's a boundary throw in. One of the players there still in the Buffalo's uniform. For a second, I was like, oh, who is that? Looked like he might have been wearing a Demon's jumper, but no, he's just out there as an official. So he throws it in and a race forward along the ground. Looks like uh, Devine's got it now. P.J. Devine throwing it up and a handball ahead going to Al McLean. McLean handballs it ahead now. Looking for one of the, uh, the ladies out there. And uh, looking for some space. Handballed over. And the ladies get the kick and the goal. Demons score the first goal. Demons one straight six. The black and gold All-Stars get to score. First goal kicked by one of the ladies, one of the uh, members of the new Lady Demon squad, which was just formed this year. And so far, they've had some very enthusiastic members. Not only have they been showing up and practicing and doing a lot for the club, they've been uh, eagerly posting on Facebook. Christina Calvillo posts a lot, as well as uh, some of the others. And what was supposed to be a rainy, overcast day, the sun's really come out. It's actually a beautiful day. But, of course, we planned for rain and forgot to pat uh, sunscreen. Luckily, one of our camera guys had some, much to my wife's delight. Now, she and I are similar. We don't tan, we don't burn, we microwave. And uh, once again, they toss it up at center. And uh, knocked ahead there by uh, Burbank over to Calvillo. And uh, the Demons have it now. Goes ahead and moves through the ground. Goes up now to Devine. Devine looking for one of the ladies. Winds up getting a tour and another kick towards goal. Oh. And another one. Two goals in rapid succession for the Demons. No, I'm sorry, it's uh, behind. 1-1-7, and the black and gold All-Stars will take the kick. That is uh, Joe Connor, it looks like. And uh, looking for Jen Vogel there. She's got it now, and uh, tackle. Nice job by Jen Vogel getting the free kick as she tackled the Demons player. The Demons player got pinged for holding the ball, and uh, Jen Vogel will take the free kick now. And she kicks it, and uh, jostled the ground, and now with it, Scotty Nicholas. Nicholas handballs it over, and the All-Stars looking to do something with it. However, uh, the Demons take possession once again, and uh, they move it up the ground again. Two bounces, and oh, he get pinged for uh, going too far, which is funny because he had bounced it off the ground twice, but uh, third time took too many steps, and the All-Stars will get the free kick for that. And the free kick uh, going out uh, just over the head. However, getting it now is Rusty Smith over to Jen Vogel. And the All-Stars are away. Shipper's going after it now. And balls it back over to Vogel. Vogel with another big kick. Goes along the ground. 
as taken by the Demons. And the Demons come back, kick in space, looking for P.J. Devine. Winds up in the hands of another Demon, who just did, takes a booming kick. And it bounces through, that'll be a goal. That's a goal, all right. Two goals, one behind, 13 points now for the Demons. So far, the uh, black and gold All-Stars have yet to uh, get to their attacking end of the ground. And we're bringing her back to center. Just a reminder, it's a huge day here at uh, Briggs Field here on the campus of MIT. Later on today, Brett Kirk from the AFL Sydney Swans will be stopping by. He'll be conducting uh, clinics. There'll be a men's clinic. There'll be, I'm sorry, there'll be a women's clinic. There'll also be a kids' clinic. And then there'll be an all-in game where uh, anyone from the general public is invited to join in and take part in the game. And uh, here it comes now. And uh, moving it up the ground, Demons once again going for it. And they take the mark. And it's handballed over to Al McLean, who gets it to P.J. Devine now. Devine tackled by Connor. And it's taken now by... Eunice who handballs it up to Calvillo. Calvillo has the ball taken away though. She's dispossessed and Connor going with it now. P.J. Devine handballs it back. Looks like Druckenmiller's got it now. He handballs it back to one of the Lady Demons. And she kicks it ahead. Looking for a teammate in space by the goal. Ball still rolling along the ground. Vogel gets in there battling for it as well. Oh, battle there at Calvillo, whoa. A little uh, animated activity around the ball there. And they're going to ball it up. No, actually, they're going to award the free kick. Free kick goes to uh, Christina Calvillo of the All-Stars. Kicks ahead looking for Burbank. However, it's taken by a demon. Handball the head. Devine almost had it. It's a battle for it. Now Devine's got it. And Devine kicks it. Devine kicks the goal. So 19 nothing now in favor of the Demons. Demons against the uh, black and gold All-Stars. Basically, it's a mixed game. Both uh, teams have uh, male and female members as we get to see some of the uh, Lady Demons for the uh, third time this season. Some of the ones we've seen play so far, we mentioned a few times Christina Calvillo. Also, uh, Andy Williams we've seen play. She was out in Baltimore. We've seen uh, Nikki Blaha play, uh, Jen Buff. We've seen Jen Vogel. So, seen a number of these players so far. And uh, it's good to see. Good to see some more people picking up the game and getting into it and uh, being really enthusiastic about it. Demons get it now off the clearance. And the kick and the mark taken by the Demons. At about the center wing. Kick forward, smothered by Burbank, but then picked up again by the Demons, and she's just going to run with it. She bounces it, goes along the ground, she loses it. Then it's uh, taken and uh, moved ahead for the Demons. And uh, they move it ahead. Back to center. Shippers tries to tackle. Ball goes back to Scott Nicholas now. Handballs it up. and they, Oh, almost. Big uh, kick, almost a tackle there. And Drucky Miller kicks it uh, in between a couple of players. And it goes now to, oh. <laughs> oh, no way. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, didn't make it to the goal. Let's say if Al McLean kicked that one over his head with his back to the goal, that was going to be totally insane. And uh, battle for it. Stays inbounds. Nice job there to keep it in. That's Rich Fuller. Connor's got it now over to Calvillo. Calvillo makes the move, and they're away. He goes up to Shippers now. Shippers has some space to run. He just can't keep the ball. And uh, the Demons come back with it now. And Elwood's got it now. And it's called for holding the ball. Umpire Chris Toffolo calling it tight today. And the free kick awarded to uh, Jen Vogel of the Black and Gold All-Stars. I believe those are some of the new jerseys that just came in, the, one that, the ones that the All-Stars are wearing. I figured since they're black and gold, why, why use the term black and gold? Hey, the Bruins victory party today. So today's a black and gold kind of day, so hence the black and gold all-stars.
But anyway, I digress. We have action going on, and the Demons try and move it back to their end of the ground. Calvillo tries to move with it. She can't, and now it goes through. Bounces. Wants, oh, she can't keep control of it, though. Goes to ground, and there's a battle for it now. And coming out, Calvillo with a nice kick. Almost a mark. Goes over the head, and it's going to bounce out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw in. And there we go. It's tossed back in by Rich Fuller. Well, oh. Umpires just play on, and now we've got uh, stoppage. And it's going to be a ball up, it looks like. And once again, Calvillo going after it. Taken now by Devine. Over to Druckenmiller. Handballs it back to McLean. Clean with a big kick. And the mark taken in front of the goal by Rusty Smith. Who kicks it, gets it out to Fuller now. Fuller from his left back pocket. Up just over the head and into the hands of a demon. With it now is Druckenmiller. Druckenmiller tries to get around Fuller. He's spun around. The kick goes right into the hands of Calvillo, who takes a defensive mark. And she kicks it ahead. It's smothered, though. Connor going after it now. And another one of the ladies getting it. And it moves to Calvillo now, and it looks like the All-Stars are away. She does a kick up looking for Shippers. Shippers has it now. And balls it ahead to another one of the ladies. And uh, she's brought down there by Andy Williams. Actually, Andy's short for Andrea. No, we're not talking about the same guy who did all the holiday specials. And Andy Williams is one of the new members of the Lady Demons. So no confusion there. So don't expect him to start singing Happy Heart or It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. And the Demons kick it now. It's taken in defense. Nice job there. That's Burbank. Over to Connor now. Connor kicks it ahead. And it's taken there by Elward. Elward sidesteps Calvillo's tackle attempt and handballs it over. And here come the Demons once again. Kick out. They've got Druckenmiller in the open. He's got some space. Handballs it ahead. Another all oh, goes right over the head of Druckenmiller. Going after it now is Burbank. Sean Burbank gets it over to Fuller. And it goes up and uh, corralled there by the All-Stars. Back to Fuller. Over now. They're trying to uh, kick it further. And the mark taken by Shippers. Shippers gives it to Calvillo. Calvillo with a kick. It's going to roll, but it's not going to make it all the way. And with it now is Williams. Handballs it up and gets it back. And the Demons kick it up. Looking for Al McLean. Goes over him, but he's got it now. Oh, he almost had it. Looked like a favorable bounce, but he wasn't able to corral it. Handballs it past, and the kick goes for a behind. So we have another uh, score for the Demons. So the Demons right now leading the black and gold All-Stars -Star, All by a score of 3-2-20 uh, to nothing. Rusty Smith with the kick in here. Smith kicks it looking for Vogel. Can't get it to her. Goes along the ground. Vogel's got it now. She kicks it ahead. And Calvillo tries to pick it up. She handballs it ahead. And once again, the All-Stars are away. Still on the move. They can't get it at the kickoff, though. And here comes uh, here come the Demons once again. Out in space. Goes to one of the ladies. She handballs it ahead to McLean. Handball back. Here we go. She makes the kick toward goal. And she's got it. Four two twenty six now for the Demons. Right now the ground looking a little slanted toward the uh, Demons attacking end. And they bring it back to center now.
And off the ruck comes out. Cavillo tried to get it. She's not able to uh, corral it. And now with it is Druckenmiller for the Demons. He kicks it out, getting it to one of the ladies. And she's tackled. That's uh, Jen Vogel in there on the tackle. And it's going to be a ball up. And they knock it ahead. Demons have it now. Over and... <laughs> Don't worry, Maddie G. We have your back. <laughs> All right, as we move it ahead here. Pushed ahead by a Burbank. There's a big race for it. Shippers going after it, but the Demons are going to get it first. Handball ahead. Looking for Druckenmiller. He's got it now. And uh, goes over now. It's kicked ahead. Looking for Divine. It bounces right into the hands of one of the All-Stars. They take it now and they're looking to move it back. Kicks it over now and the handball ahead. All oh, um, goes up to Calvillo now. And moves it once, ahead, once again ahead. And they're still moving it ahead now. And they're away. Williams trying to spoil there, but uh, the All-Stars winding up with it. Kick in toward goal. And it's going to roll through. That's a grubber. It goes right through the sticks, and that'll be the uh, first points of the afternoon for the Black and Gold All-Stars. But uh, if you're going to get points, best way to get them, go through those two middle sticks, get the goal. And now the All-Stars on the board with their first major score. It's now 4-2-26 uh, to one straight six. And the All-Stars have their first goal of the day. As we get set to uh, toss it back up. And up we go once again, tapped out of the ruck, right into a demon hands. And the Demons have it again. They're away with it now is Divine. Back now to uh, number five. And the kick by Divine. It's like he missed. So I guess uh, you can say that. Uh, double check that, though. Oh, it is a goal. Not met with the usual uh, fanfare and reception that... Uh, Normally would uh, greet such an event, but it is a goal. 5-2-32 now for the Demons. The Demons mixed team. The All-Stars still at uh, one goal straight, six points. And a couple of ladies in the ruck now. And uh, the Demons move it ahead. Uh, they try to anyway. Still at the ground. Team looking for a clearance, and they get it now. Druckenmiller's got a tackle from behind by Connor. Uh, Fuller going for it. Divine, too. Uh, Divine's got it now. He just kicked the goal. Goes, oh, and a uh, tackle from behind. She's dispossessed, but the uh, Demons able to keep command of the ball. Kicked through. Bounces. That's another goal for the Demons. 6-2-38 for the Demons. One straight six still for the Black and Gold All-Stars. As we continue here on Stateside Footy, this uh, mixed match between the Boston Demons mixed team and the Black and Gold All-Stars. And let's see. Elward's got it. Elward's got it. He got, gets pinged for holding the ball. And the All-Stars kick it up. Shippers takes the mark. However, I guess the advantage wasn't paid, so they uh, bring it back to uh, where there was a free kick. And the kick bounces off a demon. Up. Oh. 
Went past the mark, they're going to award 50. When a, when a free kick is paid, uh, the uh, opposing player has to stay, stay at a certain point called the mark. There's a protected zone around the player making the free kick. If that zone, if that zone is encroached upon, then that's a 50-meter penalty, which is what we just saw. So that's why they uh, moved up and gave the uh, player for the All-Stars a 50-meter 50, 50 penalty. And Chris Lowe setting the new mark. And now she's bringing it back. Getting set to kick, getting some advice from Rusty Smith. And kicks it along the ground, goes through just about everybody, winds up in the hands of a demon, and they're off again in their own end, deep. Loose ball there, Divine going for it, however. Uh, they're able to get it now. And that's halftime. At the end of uh, one half of this mixed footy match, the score stands the Boston Demons All-Star Team. 6-2, 38, six goals, two behinds, 38 points. And the Black and Gold All-Stars, one goal straight, six points total. We'll be back with second half action next. You're watching Stateside Footy. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. Getting set uh, for the start of action here. This is the second half of the uh, mixed to Metro footy game today. It's the uh, men and the women of the uh, Boston Demons Australian Rules Football Club here, playing a couple of mixed teams. We've got the Demons All-Stars, Team A and Team B, wearing the black and gold jerseys in fine fashion, seeing as today is the uh, Boston Bruins Victory Parade. That's uh, the black and gold All-Stars. Some of the players there, we see Sean Burbank out there on the ground, as well as uh, Demons Club President Rich Fuller. And uh, they're just about set to uh, put the ball up. Score stands after one half of play. The Demons 38, the Black and Gold All-Stars 6. And going in the ruck now, we have Calvillo. Uh, the tackle made there by Jen Vogel. Pained for holding the ball there was Aylward. And now they're moving it forward. Still moving ahead. And uh, taking uh, the, the handball there with one hand is Rich Fuller. And they're going down there. Connor's got it now. Connor gets tackled and thrown down. And with it there is uh, Lauren for the uh, Demons. Kick goes out. Burbank takes the mark. Burbank trying to get some points for his uh, teammates of the Black and Gold All-Stars. Jen Vogel's in there. It's spoiled, though, and she gets knocked to the ground. Divine with it now and uh, taking the ball now. Once again, that's Lauren for the Lady Demons. Moved ahead. And... There's Druckenmiller with it now. Ross Druckenmiller for the Demons. It's picked up there by uh, Burbank. I'm sorry, that's not Burbank. That's Fuller. And it's taken down there. It's number 25, Kristen uh, Labonde, Labonte. Actually, it's a Kirsten. Kirsten Labonte with it there. It's a ball up. And it's knocked ahead right into the hands of a waiting Demon. And they're moving it ahead. And the Demons are away. They kick it up now, looking for uh, Scott Nicholas at center. Ball takes a bounce. Nicholas gets it off the bounce. He handballs it ahead now. It goes to Druckenmiller. Druckenmiller moves it ahead and uh, goes right over the head of Amy, who's playing for the, uh, the Lady Dees. She's taken down now. Calvillo with a, uh, almost a tackle there. Not pinked for a hold of the ball, though. And uh, with it now, once again, nice handball there. Goes over to Burbank now. 
Burbank up the center wing, looking for someone to uh, put it to. He's just going to kick it into space. Adam Shippers takes the mark, wide open. He plays on, kicks it over, and it's spoiled there as they try to get it over to Jen, uh, I'm sorry, Jen, it's Labonte. And taking that as Devine, he kicks it out of his own back pocket. Bounces up and right into the hands of Druckenmiller, who's then taken down by Connor. They try and move it ahead now. It's uh, the Black and Gold All-Stars working on it, but then the Demons take it back. And it's kicked ahead now. Through center, through the corridor, looking for Al McLean. Can't get it, though. It's spoiled. And the Black and Gold All-Stars looking to take it, looking to add to their point total. And kicked over now. Mark taken by Rusty Smith. Handball ahead to Rich Fuller. Fuller's got some space. He makes a kick. It's going through. It's a goal. No, it's not. Hadn't quite made it yet, but now it's a goal. Kick there by Kristen Labonte. It's a goal. Looked like it was going through, but at the last second just kicked off. No, actually, they say it's a behind. I thought it was a goal, but no, it's a behind. 1-1-7 one, one, now. Fuller has it again. Back to Connor now. Connor looking. Going the wrong way. Kicks it right to McLean. McLean, open race for goal. <laughs> Little misdirected there. And uh, they're actually bringing it back. Was there a free kick or? <laughs> Not uh, sure what happened there. I'm assuming that was a goal. It went down to the Demons' goal. And they're balling it up at center, so that's going to be my assumption. Very uh, strange turn of events there as uh, Joe Connor went the wrong way. and. Uh, He's uh, going the right way now. He's got it. Oh, he can't uh, get a hand on it, though. He's trying to get it, but uh, Devine's right on him. Handball's back to Fuller. Fuller with a kick toward goal. It's coming through, and it's caught just before it goes over. Nice job there by the Demons once again. Looking for Druckenmiller. I believe that kick was out on the full. Indeed, it was. So the uh, Black and Gold All-Stars will get the free kick. Right now they're trailing by 37 points. They could use a couple of scores here. And taking the uh, free kick there is going to be Jen Vogel. Jen Vogel, the founder, the one of the uh, initial uh, started and people that started the uh, Boston Lady Demons. Done an amazing amount of work in the off season. And she uh, kicks it in, and it's taken for a mark. And now they move it ahead. Oh, it bounces off the hands of Rusty Smith. And with it now, here comes P.J. Devine. Oh, so open is Al McLean. And they try and kick it up. And uh, it's going. It's still rolling, and that's going to be a behind. 7-3-45 now for the Demons All-Stars. The Black and Gold All-Stars, 1-1-7. About five and a half minutes into the second half of this one. And they take the kick out. Looking for Jen Vogel. Vogel takes the mark. Takes the mark at center half back and she puts it up now. Looking for one of her teammates and now it moves through. And oh, nice, uh, nice no look handball there. Unfortunately, uh, Rusty Smith couldn't get there in time, and Devine's got it now. Al McLean with a big booming kick. And a big booming goal. No doubt about that one. 8-3-51. McLean with a big kick there. Big Al. Now, the reason they call him Big Al, he's capable of coming up big. One of the reasons why he's the uh, Demons team captain this year. One of many reasons. And I'm bringing it uh, back up to center again. Oh. 
Just about seven minutes gone now in the second half. They're getting set to ball it up again. And uh, Elward showing uh, a little tip there to uh, Anna about uh, taking a ball on the ruck. And she taps it forward. Nice job there by, uh, by Lauren. Kicked ahead for the Demons. And uh, kick now goes out. And with it is Rusty Smith. Smith is on it. And now there's Shippers. And they're away. Shippers kicks it in looking for Joe Connor. Goes to ground. And now the Demons have it again. And they're away. Goes up to Aylward. Now it goes up to Lauren. Lauren goes ahead over to Anna. Back looking for Lauren. Picked up now by Ross Druckenmiller. Back to Anna. Anna kicks it forward. Looking for the skipper, Al McLean. And it's taken there. Rusty Smith, nice job getting in the way of that handball. And she kicks it over. Too short for a mark, but they're still able to move the ball. And with it now, Rich Fuller kicks it out. Rusty Smith takes the mark. And he kicks it forward. Looking for Shippers. Shippers takes it overhead. And then Shippers kicks it in toward Joe Connor who's waiting at full forward. Once again, it goes to ground. And with it now, that's Aylward. Man, they call Hollywood. Almost taken down by Burbank, able to get it off though. And now with it, that's Andy Williams. Gets it over to Lauren. She handballs it up to Anna. She bounces, bounces again. And kicks it toward goal. And she's nailed it. Nine goals, three behinds, 57 points now for the uh, Demons. Black and Gold All-Stars, 1-1-7. One, one, and back we go to the center square for another ball up. Some more clouds moving in, but uh, still not the uh, showery, rainy day they were expecting. And uh, off the ruck, Jen Vogel gets it up, but now Elward gets it for the Demons. Loose ball there. Handball. Now it's off, and uh, Shippers gets it. Knocked away there by Elwards. Elward now gets it off once again. Oh. We have a player down. I think that's Vogel. She's getting up though. And uh, meanwhile, trying to get it out of there still. Demons work, I think that was Rich Fuller and now it goes up. And the mark taken by the All-Stars. Trying to get it out to Burbank. Burbank tries to soccer it ahead. It's taken away there by PJ Devine. And Mark taken there at the center wing. Al McLean takes the mark, handballs it ahead, and it's picked up there by Anna. Back to Al McLean. Over now to Lauren. Moves it in, and uh, handball over. That's going to Amy now. And uh, that's going to go out of bounds. As we're visited by Whittier DeGeorge, one of the uh, many awesome children of this Demons team. With Rhino's wife, Ann, giving chase. It's probably just looking, what's that thing on his head? Let's see, it's going over, and uh, that's going to be out on the full, it looks like. Are they going to have the, uh, the marker? And kick back in. Goes over the head of Anna. Taken there in the back pocket by the black and gold All-Stars, and they're trying to move with it now. Here's Rusty Smith with it over to Rich Fuller, back to Smith. Smith kicks it, and it's smothered, but it's going to go out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw in. And it's put back in play. Knocked behind, and then ahead, and then behind. And Shippers has it now. Tries to get it up to Jen Vogel. Taken now, and it goes over to uh, Burbank. Burbank with a hand pass ahead, and 
Oh, tried to get it over to, uh, oops, number 27. There's one lady I forgot to get the number for, but she's uh, trying to kick it ahead. And uh, she gets it, uh, play on, calls the umpire. And with it now is Rusty Smith over there. And no mark taken there, but the uh, black and white all-stars, I'm sorry, the black and gold all-stars still taking it. And with it now, I believe that's uh, Labonte. Kicks a grubber, goes right off the feet, and Joe Connor has it, and kicks it onto the street. <laughs> if someone picks up the ball and runs with it now, that'll be the complete definition of a free kick. <laughs> Joe Connor kicked it right out onto Causeway Street. <laughs> That's extremely funny. I hope Maddie G's not going to try and hop the fence. Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> Inspired try, but ain't happening. Meanwhile, footy in the street. They've got to make sure they get the right ball because for this game they're using a size 4 ball, not a size 5. And Damian Hellam in town, wearing a really styling cap. And it's uh, brought back into play. Or actually brought back onto the ground. <laughs> so let's see. Apparently it was a behind too. Or was it? Or did it go out on the full? It might have gone out on the full. It, in fact, it did go out on the full. And uh, Rich Fuller has it now. And he's tackled by Damian Hellam. And it goes over, and uh, Lauren's got it now. Also coming on, I mentioned uh, Ann DeGeorge and uh, their uh, little boy Whittier. Jason DeGeorge, a.k.a. Rhino, he's out there now. A couple of longtime demon stalwarts are in the house now. And uh, DeGeorge loses it. This is like one of those uh, alumni teacher versus fireman games. And... Not sure what that is. Uh, according to uh, Al McLean, it's a goal. They're basically just afternoon and just kicking it around, having some fun. Turned out to be a beautiful day here in Cambridge, too. Gorgeous day. We thought we were going to have to gear up for rain, but uh, no, everything's good. Good day, and things apparently seem to have calmed down in Boston, too. Not that we can uh, see the parade or watch the parade, but uh, the volume of uh, overhead vehicles has decreased greatly. That was a goal, because they're bringing it back to center to uh, ball it up. So now it's 10-3-63. Uh, and off there getting it now is uh, Aylward. Hollywood brings it forward. Goes off the hand of Lauren. And with it now, a Vogel, she's taken down. Poor Jen Vogel's been getting knocked around a little bit today. Long kick goes up, and it's going to bounce. Where's it going to bounce? Through for a behind. That's where it's going to bounce. One, two, eight now, and the Demons will take the kick in. Taking the kick there. Wearing number 12 today, not as normal number five as Damian Hallam. And obviously that's because one of the ladies has number five. And the kick goes up, and uh, once again, the Demons are on the move. Kick ahead, looking for somebody, anybody. That kick goes a long, long way. And the All-Stars will take it down. They'll try and kick it out of their back half. Taking the mark there is Rich Fuller. Fuller's got Smith out on the wing, but he's going to, uh, wait a minute, take the free kick and kick it forward. And, oh, he can't, get, uh, can't keep a hold of it, but he's able to get it. And handballs it over to Rusty Smith, who's coming up the wing. Smith with a big kick in, looking for Shippers. Goes over his head. Goes over Connor's head, too. Connor has it. Over to Burbank now. Burbank, handball. Back to Shippers. Shippers, handball up ahead. And the goal, kicked by uh, number 27. Once again, whose name I forgot to get. At halftime, I was asking for the names of all the ladies and didn't see her. So uh, my apologies to her. We'll find out... Uh, who she is before this game is up, and uh, we will bring that to you. So now we've got 2-2-14 uh, now for the Black and Gold All-Stars. Two majors, two minors, 14 total points. 
And it's brought back out to center. And it has been an interesting day here at MIT. A uh, game before the uh, Metro game between the uh, Buffaloes and the River Rats. Really tight, only a uh, five-point difference at the final siren. And the Demons get it out of the ruck. And moving with it now is Lauren. Another center clearance for the Demons. Oh, nice job by the uh, All-Stars, though, taking it in. Getting in there and taking that defensive mark and moving it up the ground now. And here they go. That's uh, Kristen again, Kirsten, actually. And it goes over now to Adam Shippers. Handball over to Jen Vogel. Vogel, a handball ahead looking for Sean Burbank. And it's taken by P.J. Devine, who then kicks it out over the head of Scott Nicholas. But it's still in play. And the All-Stars pick it up. Kick toward their forward 50. And they've got Rich Fuller right there who takes the mark. He'll stop it and take the free kick. And he just nice does a nice little stab kick up ahead, looking for Jen Vogel, but it's taken instead by P.J. Devine. With it now, Druckenmiller. The Demons are away once again. Druckenmiller with a kick up, and the mark taken there. Nice job there by Lauren. And she will kick it up. With it now is Druckenmiller. Druckenmiller kicks it in the uh, midst of a couple of people but it's just going to wind up rolling out of bounds. Just a couple of minutes left in this one, actually probably about a minute and a half by my estimates. The Demons uh, coming up to a convincing victory over the Black and Gold All-Stars. Right now 63-14. to 14. And it comes in off the boundary throw-in. And with it now, here come the uh, Black and Gold All-Stars again. With it now is Jason DeGeorge. DeGeorge touches down, handballs it over, and Jen Vogel's got it now. Vogel's on the move now. She's coming through the corridor. Moving right through center, she's going to bounce it quicker. She's going to be caught for holding the ball. Over to Rich Fuller, over to Adam Shippers. And now once again back to, I believe that's uh, Kirsten. And uh, the, goes to ground now. With it is uh, Damian Hallam. He's taken down there. And let's see who gets the free. Uh, it looks like they're awarding a 52. A little bit of uh, action after the awarding of the free kick, so... Chris Lowe, the referee, has decided to award a 50-meter penalty. Oh, <laughs> that was the easiest smother P.J. Devine ever had. <laughs> Went right off him. Although easy as far as effort, but uh, that thing almost gave him a dent in the head. The back of the head, anyway. Vogel has it now. Over to, uh, there we go. That's another goal there by uh, number 27. 3 2 20 now for the Black and Gold All-Stars. And they're bringing it back to center. Got to say, I'm loving Damian Helm's headgear today. Looks like a walking snow cone with that get up on. Well, he's not the only one to sport a, a skull cap type hat today. On the other side, Jason DeGeorge is sporting the same. Although much more monochromatic. Oh, look at this. Helicopter's hovering. It almost looks like a still frame shot. Off the ruck now and uh, tries to go, um, basically, they try to get it over to. Uh, whoa! Goes. <laughs> Almost tried to hand pass it right to the umpire. Battle for it now, and it's uh, fisted ahead. And uh, with it now, that's Anna, number zero for the Demons. She bounces once. Tries to kick. And that's a goal. Nice job. And as that goal goes through, we have the final whistle. That's going to end the game. Final score. The Demons, 11 goals, three behind, 69 points. And the Black and Gold All-Stars, three goals, two behinds, 20 points. But don't forget, we still have uh, more coming up, including an appearance from AFL superstar Brett Kirk. He'll be on with us, and uh, he's coming to town today to uh, do some special clinics and some other things as part of the uh, AFL's International Cup promotional tour. You are watching Stateside Footy. And 30. Oh! Yo, hey, Allison. What's going on? Working on my free throws. Just like 30 straight. 30? That's not possible. <laughs> 
Maybe not possible for you, but I've been practicing. Step back and give me the rock. Okay. Mm-hmm. One. Two. Eleven. You know what's harder when people are watching? <laughs> hey, you know, eleven's not that bad. All you need are a few pointers. Thank you. Are you a free throw expert? Well, no, not really, but I do know excellent teamwork when I see it. <laughs> oh, it's so much easier to get active and live healthier when your friends are there to motivate you with a little friendly competition. Now let's get this game started. Right, right. Oh, she's going for the hook shot. Hook shot. Oh! Oh, that's what I'm talking about. America, let's get healthy together. Welcome back to the special edition of Stateside Footy from Briggs Field here on the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. As I mentioned, it's a special episode. It's a special day. Not only are the Bruins across the river right now celebrating their first Stanley Cup win in 39 years, today we have a champion in his own right, Brett Kirk, who was part of that uh, AFL championship in 2005 for the Sydney Swans. He was voted last year best captain in the AFL. Last year was his last. He retired, and the AFL called on him to act as the international ambassador for the upcoming International Cup, and he's been basically traveling to all the countries that are taking place in the International Cup. Lately, he's been in America, and today he is actually with the Boston Demons at this is a practice ground on the campus of MIT. Coming up, we're going to have an exclusive interview with Captain Kirk. But first, let's take a look at some of the drills and some of the clinics that were put on by Brett Kirk here at MIT today.
special moment here on Stateside Footy. We uh, teased it at the top of the show. Joining us today, AFL superstar. In fact, we get to cheer, cheer, the captain of the red and the white. Brett Kirk joins us. Brett, thank you very, very much for joining us on Stateside Footy. Thanks, Bill, for having me. I've heard a lot about you, and I'm um, happy to be here on a sunny day in Boston. Well, thanks for joining us once again. It's a terrific day here for a game. We were expecting a little bit of rain. And also there was that championship parade across the river that we had to what contend you, with, uh, too. There was a few people around. A few people, yeah. Boston Bruins, Stanley Cup champions. They had the parade today. Yeah. How was the trip over from South Station? Yeah, yeah, it was fine. Yeah, Good. There was a few people around. Um, obviously, ice hockey is a, is a big thing in, in town. But, uh, yeah, it's... A lot of uh, crossover from ice hockey to Aussie rules, I think. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, speaking of journeys, obviously you're in the middle of what's being billed as Captain Kirk's Odyssey, yeah. and it's really a worldwide tour. You're the AFL ambassador, the International Cup's coming up in August. Yes. Tell us a little bit about this Odyssey, because it really is an interesting trip. I've been reading your tweets, yeah. and you've been to some, you know, not just the United States and Canada, but Israel, Sri Lanka, you know, exotic locales, but also locales where they can sometimes be global hotspots. Tell us a little bit about uh, your journeys through there. Yeah, uh, when I retired, I um, always wanted to go on an adventure with my family. And, um, yeah, the AFL sought me out to, to work for them. And um, I sort of worked out a position that I was an International Cup ambassador. And um, and once it all started, I really wanted to create some awareness about what footy's doing overseas. Um, footy sometimes... Everyone can think, yeah, it's just played in Melbourne and different places in Australia. But uh, through my travels, this is no longer just an Aussie sport. There's people all over the world adopting the game. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to show how the passion that people have. And as you mentioned, a few places I've been. I left Australia sort of mid-January and, um, yeah, basically going around the world with my wife and my four young kids. And um, I've had an amazing experience. And, uh, see, early on we went through quite a few different third world countries and, um yeah, just to, to be in places like South Africa and um, footy's played in a lot of the townships there. So to see kids with absolutely nothing, um, be out on a dirt track with no shoes on, no shirt, and I'd be doing handball drills and then all of a sudden they'd start singing and dancing. And uh, it just made my heart smile to, to think um, footy can do this um, for people, just not, not only in Australia, because I, I think it's the best game in the world because um, it does it does create a community sense and bring people together, and that's what I'm seeing everywhere I go. It's just the quality people involved, and it's not always expat Aussies. Um, Iceland and Croatia, pretty much all locals that play the game, and mm -hmm. um, I've really loved going and connecting with people, um, really connecting with people's spirit. And, uh, just uh, love being on this this journey and look forward to getting back to Australia and um, really sharing with people uh, what what our game's doing for people. It is a game that's so easy to love. I became hooked watching late night reruns on ESPN when they started running it in the early 80s, so I've been a fan ever since then. But um, as far as the way it's, it's carried on around the world, I mean, I'm seeing more and more posts coming up from different places. I know World Footy News has mentioned a lot. And really, boy, what's shaping up this year from the International Cup, it sounds, you know, it's got the makings of a terrific tournament. I, I can't wait to see games from there. Yeah, so it's going to be a week in Sydney and a week in Melbourne. And uh, the last tournament was in 2008 where there was 15 countries in for the males. And uh, this year it's looking like there's going to be 21. And so up six countries. And then uh, it's going to be the first year that there's going to be, have a women's competition. So there's going to be six teams competing from um, six different countries. Uh, so the US, Canada, Italy, uh, Ireland... Uh, Papua New Guinea and there's a multicultural Australian team playing so it's as I said footy is a great game it's very inclusive um, it's not just uh, for the elite or just very male dominated it's for everyone and I'm really looking forward to getting involved because as I said everywhere I'm going it's it's very much grassroots um, uh, obviously I was involved in the AFL for 12 years at a professional level and it, um, but I grew up in the country going watching my dad play and getting involved in the country so I, I love getting out here and people are here because they, they love it and, and they want to connect with other people whether they're here as Aussies or from the US it doesn't really matter once you're out in that, in that field um, you're out there just to have, have fun and enjoy each other's company. So what was the genesis of this tour is this something where you came to the AFL with an idea or did they approach you? Yeah, it's sort of as uh, multi-pronged, I guess. It's sort of, I was sort of thinking a certain way, and they wanted, they were sort of thinking that they want to do some work with me. So, uh, yeah, this uh, guy back in the uh, AFL, Dave Matthews, is quite a visionary in terms of where he wants to take the game and where he needs wants it to grow. Um, and it just yeah, it evolved, and all of a sudden it took wings. And it was January before I knew it. I'd only been retired a few months, and I'm jumping a plane, travelling to Sri Lanka. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And um, 
Just you, Bill. So you want to talk us a little bit about how you got involved with footy? Yeah. Started, as I mentioned, I, I was watching ESPN back in the early 80s. And, and from time to time, you would have uh, on, on TV in the States, you'd have like an, the hour-long highlight show that they would put together. But it really hadn't been around for years. And this is really started about uh, two years ago. I was late in the winter of 2009. I was searching on a website for Australian Rules Football American TV listings. And about three pages down, the search took me to the Boston Demons homepage. And I was stunned. I had no idea there was a league structure here or any, anyone here was playing footy. And so I decided right then and there, I was like, next year I want to get in touch with these guys. I want to cover these games. And that was the birth of Stateside Footy. And we've been going with it ever since. Wow. Well, yeah, okay, I've been to probably 16, 17 different countries. Countries. This is the first time I've ever seen games getting filmed. Um, is this something just for the old love of the games? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's my way too of uh, kind of a selfish purpose behind it because if I can get more exposure, my mission is to get this game on as many people's radar as possible. And in doing that, maybe that means that the powers that be will start beaming in more footy from the AFL and other places too. So, so in that, I guess you could say it's a little self-serving, but also, you know, these people put in a lot of work and a lot of effort and really you know, put on some great events and some, some great games. And like, for instance, today's thing, obviously we had a little competition across the way, but uh, they do such great work. And I just, I, I'd love to see them get recognized for what they do and have more people realize what a terrific sport Australian rules football really is. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's the best, best game in the world. And, um, I think it's great seeing people that are passionate about the game like yourself and I'm coming into contact with them all the time and most of them are all volunteers that no one gets paid um, to do it and it's all about the love of it. What is it that you love about the game? The fast pace of it, uh, the excitement, much like in hockey where you have a bounce or something like that, just a, this little piece of rubber can just all of a sudden it does something and brings an entire crowd to its feet. Same thing, like for instance, watching last year's grand final. Anytime, it seems especially anytime the uh, the pies kicked a goal, the, the entire place just erupted. And just something like that that can bring that kind of, of, of excitement and, and energy into a place. It, it's, it's just, it's, and also it's, it's just an exciting game to watch. It's one of those, it's one of the games where really just, it's not like, like, like baseball it was my first love, but sometimes it can get a little sedentary, but uh, Aussie rules, they're just, they're always going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, I think also you mentioned before about the importance of it getting on, on TV for people to watch. I totally agree. I think people need to actually be able to see the game and be captured by it and then want to try to join somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just tell me, so you've got a lot of cameras here and you're doing a lot of work. Yeah. Where is it? Can you watch your footy? Um, well, we, our flagship station is Wilmington Community Television in Wilmington, Massachusetts. It's a, it's a local cable access station. Uh, the show can also be seen online. Anytime the episodes are done, they get posted right up online. We have a site. We actually have videos on the Vimeo and on YouTube, but our main site's on blip.tv and that's where people can watch the episodes. In fact, this week, we just got our fourth Four thousandth total view online, so there are people out there watching the program, which is awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And um, do you think uh, the U.S. people can adapt to the game of Aussie rules? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, just uh, just as far as the people that I've talked to, I've already made a few conversions just at the TV station where I work. Um, my wife, one day she came home, I was watching the uh, the hour-long highlight show that the AFL used to put together, and she's like, what are you watching? She sat down, half an hour into it, she was hooked. <laughs> to the point where now she's coming with me and doing these things. We're tra <laughs> we've traveled to New York, and we tra we've traveled to Baltimore, and we're traveling to Austin for nationals this year. And she's actually been behind a lot of it. I figured this year it's like, we'll do the home games, we won't do any road games. Then she's like, you know, we could do it in New York, we could do Baltimore. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> Don't have to tell me twice. So, so she's really into it too, and it, 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 it just shows how, how quickly people can really learn to accept the game and love the game and really follow it and, and get into it. Yeah, yeah, totally great. You got anything else to make? Um, actually, just uh, not to sound like a cheesy game show host, but we do have lovely parting gifts <laughs> for you. Beautiful. And also for for Haley and the kids. Okay, beautiful. Thanks so much, Bill. Um, Thank you. Yeah, obviously uh, we we connected just recently on Twitter and uh, yes, we did. Yeah, and I read a little bit what you're doing and spoke to some people from the US. So I think it's wonderful what you're doing. Uh, it's your own time and it's something you're passionate about. And um, yeah, as I said, it's just, I guess this is what I'm seeing all over the place. Um, people like yourself, whether you're involved in administration, whether you're playing the game, whether you're umpiring. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a, a great community sense that football brings and um, I really uh, 
yeah, pay homage to what you're up to. So thanks very much. Thank you, Brett. Ladies and gentlemen, the 241 game superstar, Brett Kirk, ex of the Sydney Swans. Quick question for you. Yes. Uh, how do you think your Swans will do against the Blues this round? Yeah, I think they must be playing about now, aren't they? I think uh, the game must be nearly on. Um, yeah, uh, the Swans at the moment are playing some good footy. Uh, they have struggled against uh, the, the top sort of four sides at the moment. So, yeah, it should be a good game. I was actually fortunate enough, um, I went back to Sydney um, about six weeks ago for three or four days. Um, mm -hmm. Very uh, fortunate to be inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame for the Swans. So I popped back in, watched the Friday night game against Carlton. And uh, yeah, that night we just sort of seemed to lack a few sort of uh, tall key defenders. Uh, so yeah, interesting. I think they're playing down in Melbourne. Um, haven't seen too many games. I've actually commentated two games on the road, Bill. Uh, one in Portugal and one in Italy, and uh, it was in Italian and Portuguese. Wow. Uh, I'm not fluent in those uh, those languages, but uh, um, yeah, I was translated. So I sat at the back of the box and watched the game as it was streamed through the TV, and um, I just could have commentated my special comments, not that that special, but uh, yeah, then translated. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic that um, places like Portugal, uh, I spent a few days in Lisbon and they're trying to start footy there. So, yeah, it's, uh, as I said before, this is no longer an Australian game. I think there's over 30 countries in the world that are playing it. And, um, yeah, the more people that can play it, I think the better. Well, great. You know, my only command of the really Italian and Portuguese languages are lasagna and linguiça. So, <laughs> so good on you for doing that. Brad yeah. Kirk, thank you very much for joining us on Stateside Footy. Tom, cheers. Peace out. Very special thanks to Brett Kirk, not only for coming out and holding this uh, special day of practice and training and uh, footy outreach with the Boston Demons, but uh, also thanks to him for coming on the program and uh, participating in this exclusive interview on Stateside Footy. That's going to do it uh, for this episode of Stateside Footy. Don't forget, uh, we cover the game that's Australian-made and American-played, and we do it uh, all throughout the season here. You can check us out on cable or online at www.statesidefootytv.com. Com. On behalf of my camera people, Stacey Robert, Don Laird, Ron Bucari, I'm Bill Robert. Thank you very much for watching Stateside Footage.